Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today's tutorial will be on which oils I started incorporating into my hair routine, especially after my big chop to help my hair grow back and stay healthy and long and shiny for the rest of my natural hair journey. So I used to have extremely dry, frizzy, and just unmanageable hair before I started learning about all of the different benefits of oils and how to use them in my hair routine. So I just wanted to put all of that information in one place for those of you who may be starting your own natural hair journey and wanna know where to begin when it comes to oiling your hair. So this is my fourth day hair. I'm gonna wash it today, but before I wash it, I'm gonna do a pre-poo, which is when I just mix in a couple oils, massage it into my hair, my scalp, and then rinse it out when I take the shower. So the moisturizing oils I'm using today are coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil. But really important, even though they're classified as moisturizing oils, they won't moisturize your hair all the way. So make sure that you use a little bit of water or leave-in conditioner on your hair first before putting the oil for it to work best and actually moisturize your hair. So now that my hair is damp, it's time to apply my oil. And the first one I'm gonna use is coconut oil. This is cold pressed, virgin, and organic. So this just means it hasn't been processed through heat like other cheaper forms of oils. And it still contains all of those healthy, nutritious ingredients like antioxidants for your hair. This is an example of what you should not use. First of all, it was 99 cents, so that's already a red flag. But most importantly, um, I'm, you know, if I flip it over and just read the ingredients from here all the way down to here, I couldn't even tell you if I tried. The oil I'm using today has, boom, ingredients, cold pressed organic virgin coconut oil. So that's the biggest tip I can say for this entire video. When you do go oil shopping and you start including them into your hair routine, get the good stuff. If the label says it's oil, then the ingredients should be that oil to me. So I use the coconut oil first because it is just a magical detangler. I can't even explain it, but everyone should try it. I just take it and like rub it through my hair and it literally just detangles through my hands. So the next oil I use is extra virgin olive oil. Again, straight out of the food section because that's the purest form of the oil. If you look on the ingredients here, the only ingredient is extra virgin olive oil. Unlike this piece of trash right here. I'm gonna read the ingredients to y'all. Methylparaben, isopropylparaben, fragrance, BHT. I can't pronounce that. So moral of the story, again, extra virgin olive oil from the food section. Yes, make sure it's extra virgin. Trash. Trash. So the last oil that I add to my hair before washing it is Extra Dark Castor Oil by Sunny Isle. I use Extra Dark because there was an option for regular and extra, and that's really all I'm gonna say. So if you're gonna take anything from this video, just know that out of all of the oils I said today, castor oil, top two and she's not two. I've been including this oil into my routine religiously ever since my big chop almost a year ago and I've definitely seen just incredible growth and consistently good hair days. So castor oil, that is my girl. Castor oil has a lot of great benefits for your scalp too. So I always make sure that I massage it into there really well. Okay, so after this, I just tie my hair up in a bun. Sometimes I'll wait two to three hours and then shower, and then other days I'll sleep in it and shampoo my hair in the morning. So it really just depends how I'm feeling. So I'm gonna go in the shower and just deeply shampoo and condition my hair to get all of this grease out. I'm gonna come back and show you guys how I use sealing oils to just lock in all that moisture and make sure that my hair is shiny but not greasy until my next wash day. This is my hair after I washed it. It's a little bit smaller because it's day one hair, but if you see it's not greasy, it's not weighed down, and it looks really shiny and defined. So I love to do it whenever I'm going for just neat, perfect little, defined curls like these. I use vitamin E oil as a sealing oil after I put in my leave-in conditioner. So whenever I do my hair, I rinse it out, put leave-in conditioner, vitamin E oil, curling cream, and gel. 
After my hair dries, in order to just refresh it and add a little bit of more shine, I use another favorite oil of mine, which is cold pressed organic jojoba oil. This is probably the oil that I use the most. I use it every day on my hair and I also put it on my face every morning. It's great because it's super lightweight and it's very close to sebum, which is the natural oil that your skin and your hair produces. So jojoba oil is a great natural sealing oil because it blends in with my hair very easily and like my skin and it just naturally absorbs. And so because of that, I never experience any greasiness from the oil. So the very last types of oils I use are essential oils and the two that I use the most are peppermint oil and tea tree oil. To first dilute the essential oil, I have to use a carrier oil. So I like to use my jojoba oil again. I mix in a couple drops and then just massage it into my scalp. Since both of these oils are very lightweight, they add to my volume and they don't wear my hair down throughout the day. So you don't wanna use heavy oils on your scalp. You always wanna use lightweight ones if you wanna keep the volume. So to wrap up, for those of you who may have skipped through this video, remember that if you get an oil, get it in its purest form and make sure it only has one ingredient. Not this trash, not this trash, one ingredient. Also, castor oil is probably most linked to hair growth. So if you're gonna start with anything, definitely start with this and it's best for all hair types. It is really thick. So if you have finer hair or your hair tends to get greasy, just make sure that um, you don't use it too much. I always use just a little tiny bit on my scalp. So don't go overboard with it. And then the last thing and probably most important is that oiling your hair is not the only thing you have to do. You have to make sure that you're oiling your hair properly. And the best way to do that is to know the difference between moisturizing oils and sealing oils and when they react best with your hair to actually promote healthy hair growth. Just because you have a very you know high quality oil doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to benefit your hair if you're not using it properly. So again, moisturizing oils actually penetrate the hair, whereas sealing oils will just lock the moisture in. So for example, if you use a sealing oil but you don't have moisture in it, all it's going to do is lock the dryness in. So you have to make sure that you use the right oils for the right things. These oils collectively made a huge difference in the health and just the overall appearance of my hair since I really started taking care of it. But just remember how to properly use sealing versus moisturizing oils and to always check the label to search for any funny ingredients. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you learned something or just found this video helpful. And feel free to leave any additional questions about my hair journey or about oiling your hair in the comments. Bye!